The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Ah! Something happened here. Not exactly sure what. Ah! Ah! Nothing's working. Don't know why. Well, we'll figure it out here in a minute. Um, eh, don't know why. Let's try this. What well, kind of work there? Maybe it just need to get it started. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Man, there's a bug in my bug in my program. I had to run something else before that would play. Who knows? Uh, one of the great mysteries of computers. Uh, so what do we have going on today? Well, we're up 6.8 uh, uh, points on the S&P cash at uh, 28.29. The Dow's up uh, 22. Nasdaq's up 13. Russell's up 6. Um, I've been complaining about volume for a long time. And what you wanted to see was a lot of volume and then some follow through. Uh, well, we certainly had the, the volume over 10 billion shares on Friday. Uh, but today, no follow through. I continue to worry that if anything bad does happen, we have a lot farther down than we do up, mostly because there are very few bears, uh, whether they're buying um, downside protection in the uh, indexes, uh, the puts, or actually shorting equities. There are very few out there. Uh, not quite historically low. Uh, the volume this morning, uh, why it's gotten better throughout the day, uh, still under 4 billion shares. Uh, the lightest volume, at least from what I saw for the first 30 minutes uh, in 10 years. I mean, there was nobody trading and no volume the first 30 minutes of the day. So I'll have to find out later if that was anything like a data problem. But uh, I went back and looked at a lot of the individual stocks. Doesn't look like it was. This looked like we had that. Now, the question is whether or not uh, Friday and maybe even a little bit today and tomorrow are exhaustion moves in the market. All I'm looking for uh, is that if you want to remain bullish now, the market needs to at least tread water or go higher. Uh, one, uh, there are a ton of stocks that would make incredibly bearish patterns and have not yet if they close below the nine day moving average. Uh, the weakest part is probably Asia right now. It's unclear that they can push enough money into that market, to uh, that section of the world to at least for my opinion, save it. There are too many problems that they have. Uh, the banking system's built on sand and it may have already seen uh, some problems there. Now, whether or not that comes back in the United States is another issue, but I do believe that we are seeing a great deal of weakness there, even though they're trying to keep uh, all appearances uh, to the contrary. Uh, when we look at other things going on in the market today, we got up over 97 on the dollar index. We're back just above 96. So everybody did hop on that thing pretty hard last week. Um, we were and did gap down. This morning, a little bit um, below that 96 level, back in the 96. I suspect that there is a lot of manipulation from the Treasury uh, and others here in the United States to fix that dollar somewhere in this area. When we look to the move that we had on gold, the question was whether or not uh, it would sell off or that we'd have a continuation today. You got a whole lot of nothing in gold, no real good signals. Uh, platinum is up four bucks. Copper, uh, the real question is if it can get past three bucks. That's been where the actual economy of the world has started moving forward. Right now, 
not a lot of clues. In fact, very tough market to, to uh, hang a lot of hats on right now. Uh, but as we said this morning, or at the beginning of the show, uh, the real question is whether or not we have any continuation. And you got about three days. I would suspect that if we don't really have some kind of uh, distinct input of more volume and higher prices over the next couple of days by Wednesday, uh, we could run into a lot of those uh, uh, patterns that look like a Joe DiNapoli double repo patterns. We'll go through some of the charts that are the weakest today. We'll look forward to your phone calls at 877-927-6648. We will also look forward to your emails at PATH, P-A-T-H, at TFNN.com. Um, and that's about it. Why don't we do a little bit of history? History. Then we'll get in in the next segment to some charts. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and on this day in 1925, long before we knew anything about carbon dioxide, the worst tornado in the United States passes through eastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and southern Indiana, killing 695 people, injuring some 13,000 people causing $17 million in property damage. Known as the Tri-State Tornado, the deadly twister began its northeast track in Ellington, Missouri, but uh, southern Illinois was the hardest hit. More than 500 of the total 695 people who perished were killed in southern Illinois, including 234 in Murfreesboro and 127 in West Frankfort. I grew up in an area uh, that... Uh, was fairly paranoid for that, at least in my junior high and high school years uh, in the Midwest. And we had a high school that was the one next to me. In fact, my best friend still to this day uh, went there. Uh, and it had been hit in like 1958 or 1959 and a couple hundred of the, uh, I think of 275 of the kids in that high school got killed. Uh, so everybody in the area uh, was on a double top uh, alert, not top secret, but just top alert uh, for any of that happening. Of course, we had um, schools that were then built uh, like small block houses uh, that could get hit by a, an atomic bomb and do okay. Um, but yeah, it was uh, very interesting. I've seen a couple of tornadoes uh, close up. Uh, one rip out a sign for a Dunkin' Donuts uh, as I was driving into the parking lot. Uh, I was driving across Missouri uh, into Sedalia, Missouri, if anybody's ever been through there. Uh, as we drove into the town, the tornado was right in front of us. Uh, and I think it was, it's got to be 1978, let's say uh, circa 78. I'll look it up uh, and Google it, but I bet it's in there. Uh, and uh, was going to the Lake of the uh, Ozarks, in the middle of, the, uh, of Missouri. And uh, we watched this thing go 10 miles across Sedalia and rip up a uh, drive-in theater, which was really weird. Because there wasn't much there to begin with, and there was nothing but shredded stuff left. So it kind of looked like a bomb hit it. Anyway, we'll be back in a moment. I shall return. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And what do we got here? And we're off six and a half points now on the S&P cash. Again, uh, no follow through today. No big deal. But you need follow through either by Tuesday or Wednesday. A lot of these are going to catch up with those nine day moving averages. We're going to have a lot of signals out there. Probably uh, if these things pull back uh, any significance, I'm going to say if you uh, pull back anywhere close to 2810 on the S&P cash, you're going to have a ton of stocks uh, giving some rather uh, bearish signals. Uh, as far as stocks going higher, uh, Anadarko Petroleum is on my radar, up uh, on fairly light volume off the March 8th low. Again, uh, we're in this period where uh, they're switching a lot uh, over to the uh, summer formulations in North America, both in Canada and the United States. Uh, that means that there's a little less of supply and a little bit more premium on uh, distill. Is it, is it, I guess, uh, just, I guess we call it just cracking uh, crude. And Anadarko's up a little bit. Volume, though, again, like I said, uh, some of the volume and uh, some of the things we've been looking at has just been disastrous. Now, again, as soon as uh, uh, them, uh, most of the uh, refiners are done flipping over from the uh, winter-summer formulas, there's going to be a flood of gas coming back in the market. Uh, but uh, today, up on 1.8 million shares, uh, Friday had 6.3. Again, we had options rollover, or options expiration, rollover today and tomorrow. And generally, Wednesday, we have a fairly decent move in the markets coming. Okay, what else do we have? AWI, let's take a quick look at that. Uh, Okay, Armstrong Worldwide, which is interesting. I think it. it I think uh, Berkshire Hathaway's knee deep in this one. Uh, tried to push it above the previous high of September thirteenth, seventy three twenty eight. You, you had the volume. It just would not hold. February twenty fifth high went into seventy five sixty seven. So a couple bucks higher. Uh, right now you're closing about seventy three. 15, so you're right at that resistance level. Uh, but again, energy off these legs 
from December 26 lows continue to be on a, on the preponderance of the stocks, fairly bad looking. Uh, one out here that looks like it may be interesting as a short position for me is BlackBod, B-L-K-B. Uh, this gap down back on October 9th of 2018, uh, 3.6 million shares. Uh, you got into it a couple of days ago with 266,000 shares. Today, 151,000 shares. I didn't look and see when earnings is coming. Maybe I should do that. Uh, but one of the weakest looking stocks on volume in the entire market, BLKB. Right? Blackbaud May 8th. You got plenty of time. Um, yeah, it looks like that earnings date was right on the first week of February. Don't have a lot of push and a couple of uh, moves out here, but uh, that would take you from, what, about 80 bucks back down to 58 uh, to retest the low that's never been tested. Uh, don't know if it would. Need to find out more about the company, but interesting uh, move nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> Someone says that uh, AWI uses prison labor. Yep, almost everybody does, don't they? I'm thinking that half the furniture, all the furniture, uses prison labor here in the United States. Checkpoint Software Technologies, CHKP, uh, up through the uh, September 17th, 120.81 high, uh, 1.75 million shares so you go through that on thursday no on friday with 1.5 million shares didn't quite get it today just 840,000 shares uh a sell signal would be any close below 1 2081 on checkpoint um again a lot of these things had some big runs never really had that much uh energy it doesn't look like the worst one out here uh the Clorox company saw a few of these stocks start to wane uh, last week that are in the safety space. Uh, February 4th, 161.35 on Clorox. Uh, tapped it on Friday with 1.4 million shares compared to that 4 million shares on February 4th. So very light volume, pulling back into that trading range today. And what else do we have? D.H. Horton, another one in the... Um, housing industry tried to push through its January 11th high, uh, $40.11. That was 12 million shares. Got into it with 4.5 million shares. You could, if you were being very generous, you could say 10 million shares back on the 12th, but it kind of rolled out and gave it all away. Again, just 5.4.5 uh, million shares on the 13th. So not a whole lot, but it's certainly pulling back a bit today. Uh, again, just a lot of these stocks don't have enough juice to blow out these highs, although they push them. They're not getting the big volume. Uh, what else do we have? ERX, uh, Direction Energy Bull Shares, uh, going back up against its February 20th high. It's $23.51 with 2.2 million shares into it so far today with 1.3 million shares. Uh, again, you need to uh, kind of pierce at uh, 2351, go above it, close back below it, and maintain the light volume to get the signal to, to, to Etsy. Um, actually bought my first product on Etsy, didn't know uh, who did it, um, didn't pay much attention, but for 25 bucks, we'll see what happens. Should be here this week, according to the website. Um, you know, you. You did break out on earnings, which was the uh, 26th of February with uh, 20, almost 24 million shares. Retested it with only 3.3 million shares. Had a little pop out here. You're going to maybe get one more chance. Uh, if the market would turn bullish, uh, a very light volume test of about $64 would look pretty good in that one. Uh, what else do we have? Exact Sciences. Uh, made a previous test on just slightly lighter volume. It certainly didn't have any on the way up off the March 8th low. Certainly a reversal today, not a ton of volume, but certainly giving it up in a hurry 
today with 1.8 million shares. Got to 97.27 on February 27th with 2 million shares. Just came in about 100,000 shares light on Friday, uh, but could not really bust that high and you rotated right back down. Uh, GBX, which we've been talking about for a few days, the green bar companies who make uh, train the train cars, right? Um, actually continues to look one, at like one of the better looking stocks in the market, at least at lows. Uh, you had a very nice test of 50% volume from the December 24th low at 37.44 uh, back into this uh, March 15th low. And um, apparently they make a lot of, uh, oh, going to the break, make a lot of train cars to hold crude. We'll talk about this more when we come. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, we're talking about the Green Briar companies. Uh, GBX, uh, one of the companies that looks fairly good down here at 37.44, of course, makes train cars. Um, it's closing back above 37.44 today, uh, 37.94. So actually back into the trading range out here. And, you know, I don't see this as a horribly risky company. Uh, but again, uh, especially after we get done uh, with the uh, changeover and crude starts flowing again, uh, maybe a lot more of these train cars to carry crude especially out of the Northwest. 
where it's a lot more difficult to get into a pipeline. Maybe just uh, move it far enough to get it in the pipeline. Uh, but uh, we shall see. HDV, uh, a nice uh, pop up here uh, going up against a 1.1 million share high on December 4th. It was 93.12, creeping up on it with 220,000 shares today. So you have to look at some of these ETFs that are very special with almost no volume. Healthcare Trust of America, HTA, uh, a huge reversal day out here and a good uh, example of looking at uh, distribution at highs. Uh, when stocks go sideways at the bottom, it's generally accumulation. When stocks go sideways at highs, uh, generally a good sign of distribution. And you had a very light uh, bounce off the, uh, for energy off the December 26th low. Uh, you did have a little bit of juice as you got back up into those highs, uh, but for the most part, the energy on a daily basis uh, was fairly poor. Um, I suspect that if we don't get any volume in the market, that's what we're kind of looking at in this uh, setup right now is the same in the broader indexes uh, is uh, HTA. So you may want to look at that one. Uh, Intel uh, trying to push through uh, a couple of the really bad days back in uh, June, uh, where these things were down on 44, 45 million. You got up uh, to the previous high on about the same. The only thing, problem I have is that it's not, Intel is not going to be Microsoft or uh, some of these other companies that actually, I think, end up being huge winners. They may be winners on a few dollars, but I don't see anything that really drives this as long as the CEO is a CFO. Uh, I-N-B-H, another one, Invitation Homes, um, a real um, dark cloud cover, if you want to talk about uh, those kind of bearish candlesticks today. Not a lot of volume, but certainly was up on nothing. Uh, got into the previous highs back on August 28th of 2018, it uh, was at 2384 with four and a half million shares. Friday, he had three million shares, still didn't make it. Uh, but again, uh, just, you know, we're taking back about seven or eight days of uh, trading in that one. Not that it's a huge dollar amount, but um, does look rather bearish out there. Or we're doing bearish companies, uh, bearish signals. Uh, we talked about the IYF looking very weak. On Friday, that was because you're going into the December 3rd high at 120.59 with 640,000 shares. Into it today with 214,000 shares. Even on Friday on the monster volume, you only did 300,000 shares. This one looks like and continues to look worse uh, than most of them going, uh, most of the uh, financials going into the uh, 2007. I don't know what's going on. I can tell you, though, we've dipped below uh, the nine day for the first uh, and or a three by three displaced moving average. The next close below that, uh, I almost feel compelled to pull the trigger on a short on it. Uh, K, uh, which is Kellogg's company. Again, uh, this one's down at the bottom. Don't know if kids aren't eating cereal anymore or what. This thing's banging along the bottom. I uh, did test a previous low on about 2 million uh, less shares. That was February 11th, low at 54.14, came in with 5.8 million shares. Got into it with 4.2 million shares uh, back on the 13th. Uh, you've popped back into that trading range, uh, 54.28, which is where it's at now. Any close above 54.14 uh, is a buy signal on it, and again, one of the better looking stocks in the market. And when uh, the consumer stocks that people buy no matter what look good or bad, uh, it's always something to look at. And we've got a little bit of both. We've got both Kellogg's uh, and a few of those kind of stocks and Clorox, which uh, generally eh, shouldn't be at its highs if everybody's thinking the market's going higher. Schneer Energy, uh, as we said, uh, the best case for energy right now is pretty close. And you probably have 
probably till August to be a, a seller of natural gas. Uh, LNG testing the October 2nd high of 7103 that uh, came with 2.44 million shares. Uh, tested on March 13 with 1.77 million shares. Up today on a little less than a million shares so far. And again, any of these uh, drifts back below the three by three displaced moving average would be fairly large sell signals in this. We have not gotten them yet. Uh, Novartis uh, trying to make a new high through the December 4th high. That was $92.39, yeah, $92 uh, 3.9 million shares. Got through it on 2.6 million shares on Friday. Today, you got about 1.7 million shares. No signal yet other than the fact that it's trying to break out previous highs on extremely light volume. Let's check the mail here. Someone wants me to look at AMAT real closely to see what else is going on. Um, this thing's really just getting back uh, into uh, resistance. You had a lot of volume on Friday, which is a fairly decent short squeeze. You had 23 million shares compared to the old high that had about 10 million shares. So you had the volume, no follow through today and extremely light volume so far, 4.4 million shares. Again, uh, any crack below probably uh, a nine day moving average or three by three displaced moving average uh, would probably have this take a target of $35, which is not the end of the world, uh, but that's about halfway up this move. SDS, as we look at this one, um, the uh, ProShares Ultra Short S&P 500 uh, banging through the previous lows of November 8 and December 3rd. The question is whether or not we can get to the low of September 21st of 2018. That was $32.48. It was 6.7, 6.8 million shares. Um, Friday, you had 5 million shares. Today, just 2.2 uh, million shares. Again, getting some signals out here. Now, maybe you get a little thrust back in there, but we've gone through the previous movements where we did have a little bit of a bounce uh, in the SDS. Now we're back down. They're really in the kind of energy that makes you think that we're going to blow out the tops, uh, nor blow out the bottoms. In a minute, we will turn. We'll look at uh, the handful of more stocks in my list, and then we'll look at some of the big name and big cap stocks. Time to give me a call at 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, to, 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 what do we have? Well, we're up eight and a half points now on the SP cash. Didn't been bouncing around here anyway. Up 32 on the Dow, NASDAQ up 22. Uh, Russell's up six. So, uh, again, uh, you know, keep a close eye on the volume. But uh, yeah, 4.3 billion shares, not a lot. And it does kind of look like maybe we had a buying climax on Friday for options expiration. Got a little bit of follow through here today, but again, that may be options expiration rollover. Uh, tomorrow, if today's higher, we close higher, then generally tomorrow will be a lower day. And then Wednesday uh, is the proof of the pudding where all that is behind us uh, for the uh, market. And really, they're looking forward to what's going to happen in April. So um, you know, don't expect a huge move out there. Uh, tomorrow, but probably down at least for a good portion of it. And the question is, at, you get to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, what's happening? And, of course, at the same time, what do we have? Well, we got the FOMC out blabbing. Aunt Blabby. Who had that one? Jonathan Winters. Wasn't it Aunt Blabby? I think it was Jonathan Winters. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, what else do we have going on? Well, we will. Uh, oh, we were looking at pro shares. Let's go to the next one. SPXU. Uh, next, same kind of thing. S and P 500. Uh, you do have uh, some volume, but today certainly in it. Two and a half million shares so far in the pro shares trust. SPXU. As we go uh, after the September 21st lows of uh, yeah of 2018. This is a reverse. Uh, bearish ETF 3135 with 3.14159. Oh, God, I can't even remember it that much more any, any longer. Anyway, uh, we got a little bit more volume, but there just wasn't the push and this very light pullback all the way back. SQQQ, when we look at that ETF, uh, it's gone a little bit farther. Again, there's going to be a little bit of, of decay back uh, through the October 1st low of 2018, which was $10.83, with about 20 million shares. You got into it with even more volume a couple of days ago, with 30 million shares. Uh, you actually broke it. And now today, though, you only have about 15 million shares so far. So the question is whether these pop back into the trading ranges or not. SSO, which is the Pro Share Ultra 500, uh, the bullish version of it, uh, as we get into highs on this one, you were looking for 2.8 million shares, the December 3rd high, 116.96. Uh, on Friday, you had 1.4 million shares. Today, just a little over a million shares as we go into that high volume December 3rd high. Uh, even if you want to take it and be, um, and be uh, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, generous, you still need uh, 2.14 million shares and you only have 1 million shares so far today. So let's say you end up with 1.2 or 1.3 million shares. 118.18 is that November 8 high uh, with even lighter volume. 
Uh, do, 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 okay. And do, 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 do. Stag Industrial. Don't know a lot about this one, uh, other than the fact that this is one of these stocks that's getting ready to do a, a double repo. Any close below about 28.25 uh, puts this one uh, in the part of probably coming back to 27.14 fairly quickly. Uh, but you look for the last big day of volume, and it really didn't have anything back to the lows of December 26. Don't know what these guys do, but it does just on a chart basis. Looks like it could be problematic. Star Award Properties, again, a lot of these real estate stocks starting to give some signals of a light volume at highs. Uh, this one just had very light energy off that December or January 2nd low. Uh, now it's back into the November 29th high, 22.70, 2.4 million shares. Today, you're pushing it up with uh, 852,000 shares so far. You had a, a nice volume day back on the 28th of February with almost the volume to get it instantly rolled back down. Now it's been going up uh, just a little bit each day. On Friday, you had 2.3 million shares, so you got into the candle but didn't break it today. Kind of piercing that actually just tied the high, uh, but there just isn't a lot of volume out there. So everybody, again, uh, doing the prairie dog and the turtling, uh, just wanting to see what's going on. Uh, just to do, uh, okay. Um, thanks for something, but I don't, you scrolled off the screen, so I don't know what someone thanked me for. Uh, to do, okay. Barclays Capital Municipal Bond Fund, making a little bit higher high. I don't see a whole lot in that just yet. Uh, Tiffany's, another one that is a possible short uh, as we look at it up here. A gap down with some decent volume on the 28th of November. Did so with uh, 10.3 million shares. Uh, up into that gap today with 807,000 shares so far, even on Friday, 1.6 million shares. So still lacking the juice of that uh, 10.3 million share a day. Uh, okay, da, 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 da. what else do we have here? TPRE, uh, which is third point uh, reinsurance company. And uh, yeah, these reinsurance companies are the ones when everything hits the fan, they always blow up because they never actually carry enough reinsurance, or at least they never seem to. Uh, this one's back into this huge down day, going back to the 28th of February. And it came down with 921,000 shares up today, uh, back into that gap area, 144,000 shares. Um, not a trading stock probably, but would make me want to dig a little bit more into the reinsurance business. WEX, uh, back up into this move much lower. The October 31st high was 180.32 with 750,000 shares. Friday, you got into it with 361,000 shares. Today, just 210,000 shares so far. And uh, yeah, there's worse ones out there. What else do we have? We got Wings Stop been banging against its highs out here. And again, we've seen the pizza companies kind of coming down. I wonder when earnings are on this one. W-I-N-G. Of course, I hate to pull a short on something during uh, Final Four, but it does look kind of interesting out here. Uh, let's see what their, when their earnings are again. To, to, to May 29th, so you got some time on it. Uh, two highs, 620,000 shares October 17th uh, and January 11th at uh, 700,000 shares. Uh, both of those in the low $72 range. Today you got to 71.79, got about 301,000 shares. So again, we're going to be looking through a lot of these. My guess is I'm going to get a lot more tonight in my scans. We'll be back shortly where I will return.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we shall finish up with Yanex, and I got one more up here. Uh, this is the Russian version of uh, Google for everything I can find out. Uh, this is the October 17th high, $35.98 with 5.7 million shares. Went into it today with less than 2 million shares so far. Went above the previous high. Looks like we're going to close back into that trading range. So you do have a fairly decent signal, uh, signal here. What is that Russian ETF? I'm trying to remember that now. Uh, Russian ruble. The next rusher, RSX. Let's take a quick look at that. See if there's anything in that. Yeah, same kind of thing. Um, big gap higher today on almost no volume, though. Uh, Mr. Putin, richest man in the world by far, although no one really brings it up because all his wealth is hidden. Uh, somewhere between 450 and 500 billion dollars. So probably twice the richest man in the world ever, even inflation adjusted. But the uh, question is, what can he ever do with it? Because if he ever actually moved it, it would be problematic. Uh, to the February 5th, $21.40, 11.7 million shares. We're going back into that today. Big gap, 6,800, uh, 6, yeah, no, 6.8 million shares today. So going back into the previous high with about half the volume. 
and uh, eh, got a nice gap there that could uh, be problematic. I don't know if that's a currency issue. I'm going to have to look at later tonight, but certainly the ETF is not getting all the love that it had before back here on February 5th. And uh, if I could sing, I would sing, what was that song? Where's the love? Who sang that song that you said you would give to me? Well, no love for the RSX today. Kind of quiet day. My guess is it will be quiet until Wednesday with the FOMC. And then we're going to have some action. A little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll this week. Rock and roll probably on Wednesday. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same back channel.